Welcome everyone to the Compass PTN Lean Overview. My name is Sarah Pavalka and I'm here today to talk to you about what you need to know to either start your journey or continue your journey of lean within your organization. As an improvement advisor through the Iowa Healthcare Collaborative and Compass PTN, we are here and available to be able to help you with this journey. As you continue to listen today, this short one hour video will be able to help you take the practices of lean and begin to continue to implement them within your organization. So let's go ahead and get started. The objectives today to the video are first to decide, define the lean concepts, having an opportunity to go through some basic definitions of what lean is and what lean is not to be able to help you start your journey within the organization. Also think about some elements of a lean foundation. So maybe you've been practicing some of the tools for a while and wanting to build your foundation within your organization for lean and have more individuals kind of understand or be able to use it. Here's some hints on ways that you'll be able to help that foundation within your organization. Third, practice some of the lean process steps. Being able to understand that lean is a cycle of improvement and we need to be able to understand what those steps are to effectively practice them within your organization. And last but not least, quickly and briefly cover some techniques and tools within the lean continuous improvement efforts to be able to roll them out in your organization. So let's start with some lean concepts, some basic definitions of what lean is and what lean is not. Here's the lean definition. Lean is a systematic approach of analyzing the flow of information, process, and materials in order to eliminate waste while striving for continuous improvement to achieve enhanced value to the customer or often it's the patient. So being able to look at your organization and reduce the wasteful pieces of processes or even the process overall. Lean is a very simple methodology that you can use ultimately without anywhere in your organization. It doesn't have to be in certain areas it can be deployed and used throughout your organization. Let's take a break for a minute and talk about what lean is not. There are three key pieces we want to think about when deploying your lean efforts within your organization. And these are things that you should ultimately stay away from. Lean is not a method to reduce the organization's headcount or if we think about reducing the number of employees that we have within your organization. Often, organizations use the lean efforts to be able to become more efficient and more effective. This may result in individuals having some extra time in their day and that's great. What we want to be able to do is redeploy them into other areas that may be starved for some help or assistance. We don't ever want to take an opportunity to let someone go or have less employees because of your lean efforts. And if you think about it, I wouldn't practice as an individual within your organization and work my way out of a job either. I would ultimately want to be able to participate and add value to my organization, not lose my job. The second one, lean is not for companies where employees or the decisions have to be controlled by leadership. This is a very much of a bottom-up approach. You want to be able to take those efforts and those ideas from the individuals that do the work and deploy them and use them as opportunities for improvement within the organization. If leaders need to be involved in every decision and micromanage every move within your organization, the lean paradigm is going to be a struggle. Rather, leadership can give boundaries or have the opportunity to be able to set goals for the team, but ultimately the team and the individuals that do the work should ultimately decide and plan on the changes within the work. Last but not least, lean is not a one-shot quick fix. There's no magic purple pill that's going to be able to help you in 15 minutes or an hour or even one day be able to improve a process. It may take a little bit more time than that. We have to think of lean as a cycle of improvement, continuously adding more value every time you do the improvement. 
So if you're thinking that it's going to be something that you can just magically have happen and work or fix overnight, you're probably setting yourself up for some disappointment. Think about this as a cycle of improvement where you're going to continually, as you go through the revisions of improvement, improve the value to our customers. If we think of the lean environment, we have to think of this as the way we can build this foundation. So here are some things in, that you can think about when you start to build your lean environment. You have an opportunity to be able to build this environment and be able to provide an organization where lean is active and actually embraced. The things listed here on the slide are an opportunity for you to think about as you start to uh, roll out lean. Or maybe you've had an opportunity to do some things within the lean environment, but maybe have not hit all of these pieces. This is not necessarily a checklist for you to be able to use when we create a lean environment, but you want to be able to think about, do I have or do I support these pieces within my organization? If not, work to strive and, and gain one of these pieces or elements of a, a lean environment. As you start to grow within your lean journey, these become more and more important, and you can see how building this lean environment actually helps the organization bloom. If we think about the elements within a lean environment or within a lean organization, there are three things that we are often brought to the table with when it comes to improving our organization. These th three things are focusing on the delivery or the time that it takes to deliver the services or products. The next thing is the quality in which we provide those services. And last but not least, the cost. Lean takes these three elements and considers all three of them. It's not an improvement methodology that focuses on just one or the other. Think of this as a three-legged stool where you have to be able to value and take the opportunity in each of these areas to improve your organization. So if you will, it's a balanced approach. It, when we take a balanced approach, we have the opportunity to be able to increase our services and our management effectiveness throughout the organization. Lean focuses on the delivery or time that it takes to be able to provide those services. So think of it as how long does your patient have to wait to be able to get the services. The quality, the benchmarks, the best practices, are they implemented within your organization? And last but not least, are you becoming effective and efficient by saving time and money within your organization. When we look at the opportunities of continuous improvement, there are many opportunities within our world that we can actually use and deploy within our organization. Some of them are listed here, including the one that you're hearing about today, Lean. But all of these improvement efforts have the same foundation and the same pieces. Whether your organization has decided to take a journey down and use lean methodologies or maybe it's the plan, do, check, act cycle. Maybe it's other opportunities such as Six Sigma. There's also opportunities out there that haven't even been listed here. One of the things that I wanted to be able to provide with this slide and this piece of the presentation is to remind you that continuous improvement is a method. It is a philosophy or a culture within your organization that you have to spread. Lean is no different. If you take the journey and you take the tools that Lean provides, your organization will become more effective and more efficient. So think about if you've deployed one of these other efforts that are listed here, you can definitely integrate the lean tools and lean pieces as well. Many of these continuous improvement methodologies or efforts that are listed here sound and almost act very much alike. So don't get hung up so much on the names or the things that your organization has done in the past but continue to blend them together and move forward down your journey of continuous improvement. I do, however, want to take one quick minute and focus on the Plan, Do, Study, Act, and Lean. Why did I take an opportunity to pull these two out? Well, they're the most common 
opportunities or continuous improvement efforts that we see in healthcare today. Many organizations have started down the journey of continuous improvement by using the Plan, Do, Study, Act cycle. Now they're looking at implementing or changing into lean. One of the things that I want to be able to stress is that it's not so much of a change. It's not necessarily something that we have to remove the PDSA and now bring in the lean methodologies. They very much work hand in hand. So take, let's take an opportunity to see how you can continue to use the plan, do, study, act cycle and begin to implement some of the pieces from lean as well. So the plan, do, study, act cycle. As we know, it comes from a philosopher and an individual that has worked for many years in the manufacturing and education system, Dr. Deming. Deming was an individual who strove for, strived for continuous improvement in any of the organizations in which he worked, consulted, or was a leader. His cycle of improvement, the Plan, Do, Study, Act cycle, is a very systematic, repeatable process that many organizations still use today. The value is extremely high and ultimately the process is very simple. It's okay if your organization has started to use the Plan, Do, Study, Act cycle or maybe you've used it for years. I want to stress with you today, again, that you do not have to remove yourself from using that Plan, Do, Study, Act cycle when you start to implement some of your lean pieces. As you begin to integrate lean into the plan, do, study, act cycle, many times organizations start to pull the pieces of lean that they like and integrate them. And that's perfectly fine. I personally call that a hybrid method or a methodology where you start to blend the two. There's pieces of the lean environment. Um, think of lean as a cycle as well. It came from an individuals that have worked in the Toyota Motor Company and many times you might hear people talk about using the Toyota production system. And that's actually where lean methodologies came from was Toyota. Their focus is on value and reduction of waste as we've already heard, looking at mapping or how does the organization flow, the pieces and the parts, um, how do we move through the organization by using tools such as standard work and waste reduction within your organization. Toyota and the lean methodologies are also extremely easy to use and that's why sometimes the happy marriage of the plan, do, study, act cycle and lean is often brought into organizations. So these two methods work very well together. If you have not started your PDSA or use PDSA as a methodology in your organization today, it's perfectly fine. You can start in by choosing the methods of PDSA and integrating lean or just work with the lean cycle as well. So let's talk about what are those elements of a lean foundation. There are three key pieces that we want to think about when we move into and start to build your house, if you will, of lean. Think of that as you build a house, you have to be able to have a solid foundation. And these three pieces are the things that you're going to be able to need and use within your organization when you start your lean journey. So what are those elements of a lean foundation? The first thing is leadership involvement, second, culture change, and third, teamwork. We're gonna take a short opportunity to walk through each of these and so you have an idea. Again, many of you may have already started your lean journey and you may have parts and pieces of this, but think back, look back to your organization and say what are pieces of this foundation that I may need to strengthen as we continue to move forward. First, leadership involvement. There's some key leadership pieces that you think about when implementing lean or starting your lean journey. One of those key pieces is that leaders need to be out and be available and observe where the work is being done. We cannot make a decision and look and change our organization from behind the walls and the closed door of a boardroom. You need to be as a leader out and in front of the individuals that are doing the work. Go out and observe the work. What do you see as a leader within your organization? If you don't take the opportunity to get out and be able to see the work 
and, and know how the work is being done. It's very hard to effectively change the organization with something that's ever going to sustain long term. Understanding how it's being done and taking that feedback back to your office is key. Don't make the decisions without being out there and seeing where the work is being done. As a leader within your organization, there are also some responsibilities with your involvement. Some of those are to be a coach, look at handing that power to the people within your organization, thinking big picture but knowing the functional focus, and last but not least, understanding the cycle of continuous improvement. When individuals take on these responsibilities and use them effectively within your organization, the lean journey is much easier. It's also an opportunity where it ultimately happens and has, gives an opportunity for you to be able to grow and strengthen your organization. Thinking about leaders being involved in the lean journey, as I mentioned earlier, it's not to control it, it's to be involved in it. So when we think of that lean journey, think of it as a human-centered behavior or a human-centered philosophy within your organization. For the triangle, where it has the CEO as the top, and many times in traditional organizations, we had a do-do-do philosophy, where leadership just instructed and told individuals what to do. The lean environment is actually just the opposite where the individuals at the top of the leadership um, sit at the bottom and they, it rests on their decisions, but it's also supported. We need to be able to think about sending support up into the triangle. So the image that you see here, this upside down triangle, if you will, where the, some of the supports and the decisions are very much balanced on that le the CEO and upper management is actually a much tougher environment to be able to deploy. So individuals within this uh, journey often say to me, hey Sarah, I don't want to lose my control. And I say to them, you're not going to necessarily lose your control, but balancing is a much tougher job than just sending down those directives. So think about your human-centered behavior within the organization. How comfortable are you as a leader balancing the organization and supporting versus turning and controlling. The second element that we talked about was creating a good culture or a culture of change. On the slide here, you can read through these lean versus non-lean culture comparison points. Often in an organization, we find that as we continue down through this lean journey and we get more and more experience with lean, it really does become a culture. It's just not something we do. It's not something we pull off the shelf. It's actually something where the culture supports the lean journey. And you start to see that within your organization, the culture ultimately changes to a more collaborative, cohesive, more effective and efficient organization. Take an opportunity to use these bullet points to evaluate your organization. If you see the things or have heard the things on the non-lean side, it may be your opportunity to continue to strengthen as you move forward within your lean journey. And last but not least, the third point of a lean foundation is teamwork. Leaders are actively involved in the lean work but it takes a team. It takes individuals throughout the organization at all different levels to act and function as a team. So if we think of these behaviors and roles, not only from leaders as a start, as a role model, but within the organization as a whole. Many times in teams, we don't provide these behaviors or even the role model within the organization. And we have an opportunity to strengthen our teamwork and the work that we do as a team to, to move the organization and sustain the work that we are doing. So moving on to the lean process steps. Now in the next section of the presentation, we journey away from the theory within the, organ, within the lean and now move into the practical, if you will, application of the lean methodologies 
within your organization. We are going to walk through the lean process steps and then we will end with, as we said earlier, with some of the tools or the common, if you will, tricks that are within the lean journey that you can implement within your organization. But let's get started with the lean process steps. Here are the lean process steps. As you can see, there are six steps within the lean process or the lean cycle. Um, the first one is to define the customer's value. So in our cases within healthcare, what is the patient or the client actually wanting? What are the services that they want and continue to add value to their health and healing? The next step is to be able to map it, be able to look at what are we doing today? What's the current state of our process? Third piece is look at how does that process flow? So think of it as a rolling river. Is it smooth and tranquil or is it rough and full of rapids? We want to be able to have a conversation with the actual flow of that process. The fourth step, very common to root cause analysis, is looking at the waste elimination. So where are the pieces, where are the parts of your organization that are not, in a, that are not efficient? That may have what we call a bottleneck. You want to be able to evaluate, assess, and ultimately eliminate those. Then once we've done some improvement work, we continue, work, continue the work on standard operations or standard work, creating those baseline measures and knowing how our cycle is doing. And then last but not least, think of the lean journey or the lean process as a process improvement cycle. We continuously work to where we can improve. So now let's take these process steps and break them down a little bit farther. We mentioned earlier that we have this component or this definition of what we call value add. When we think of the customer, we have an opportunity to look at what we do as either three pieces. Is it value add? Is it non-value add? Or is it necessary non-value added? Let's start with value add. Those are the things that we continually strive for. It's any activity that increases the market for or the function of the service. So you have an opportunity to say, what does the customer want? What are they ultimately here for? That's the value in which we provide our services. The non-value add are those things that I mentioned earlier are maybe considered waste. Those things that we've always just done it that way. Or we may have done it that way for a good reason many years ago, but we're still continuing to do that process in an inefficient or ineffective way. Those non-value added or waste activities are the things that we want to be able to eliminate and reduce within your organization and within your processes. And last but not least, necessary non-value added. Those necessary things that we have to do within our organization to keep the doors open. Maybe it's a regulatory requirement. They do add value to your organization and may add form and function, but it's not directly to the customer. It may increase the safety or the, ultimately the accessibility within your organization, but they ultimately don't impact the customer directly. Those necessary non-value added things are things that we need to be able to maintain and keep, but ultimately minimize within your organization. So I've mentioned several times waste, the idea of waste. Listed here are the seven types of waste that you will find in a lean methodology. These are the things that we look to get rid of or eliminate or even reduce as much as we possibly can as you start to um, improve your organization. Things such as storage with excess inventory, maybe it's papers, maybe it's boxes, maybe it's things that have just sat there for a very long time. Storage can also be in the electronic medium. As we start to move in healthcare to the electronic medical record, many times we need more and more storage to handle the capability. What's really going into that medical record? What's really going into our IT files and our papers that are now not sitting in a filing cabinet, but sitting electronically? How much do we really need? How much are we really storing? How much do we really need to be able to get to? 
that's an opportunity to look at our storage, both physical and non-physical, and be able to make improvements. Transportation. How much are we moving things around? And maybe it's not even physical things again. As I mentioned with storage, we move a lot of information via an, a computer or an electronic record. How much are we doing that? How much are we moving either a physical item or knowledge back and forth, handoffs, being able to move that piece from one place to another? Overproduction, producing more than we need. We commonly see this in things as physical items such as paper, but oftentimes we have overproduction in some of our um, electronic systems as well, such as email. You've seen those email chains where there's maybe be 10 people that are carbon copied on it. Do all of those people really need that email? Or is it just an opportunity to send an FYI information maybe at the end of the week or whatever works for your team? Unnecessary processing, the things that we have to redo or resend or recopy. So the key is here with unnecessary processing, those words that start with the letters RE are important to hear and to be able to say what's going on within my organization, that we didn't do it right the first time, but now we have to redo something. The next one is waiting. We have an opportunity many times to wait. We, we talk about our patients waiting in waiting rooms, in treatment rooms, and in other areas within our organization, for example, results. But as individuals that work within our organizations, we often wait too. Send an email requesting some sort of action. We wait for a few days. Maybe it's even longer. So not only do we wait from an operation standpoint, but our customer, our patients are also waiting as well. What happens when we sit and wait is that things can actually spoil or go bad. So if we make a patient wait a couple days to be able to get in, could their condition possibly change within those couple days? If the answer is yes, it could actually cause harm to that patient. So we need to think about how are we waiting, when are we waiting, and why are we waiting? The next one is excess movements. So think of this is in your work area. How convenient are things? How located are things close to where you actually do the work? You want to think about all that extra movement, all those extra handoffs. Uh, anytime that we have an opportunity for excess of these movements could actually um, cause harm or it could be damaging. It also could be just a waste of time to be able to run back and forth to be able to get things. And then last but not least, a type of waste within your organization, often known as an error, is truly a defect. So we did something once and we assumed that it was done right or we thought it was actually going to be done right, but actually had a defect in that work process. So how do your processes alert you if there is a defect, if there's something wrong? Do you have alerts and symbols and signs, if you will, the bells and whistles that go off when we know something's not done right? We have to be able to reduce the errors within our organization. And in healthcare, many times when we have an error, it's harmful. And so if you think about that you want to reduce those defects or reduce those errors in our organization, ultimately this waste becomes the highest priority. So now that we've covered some of the steps and some of the definitions within Lean, we will move to the tools and techniques within the Lean methodology, continuing to break these down. Now one thing I want to be able to caution you with is there are many, many tools and there are many opportunities to start to integrate or continue to integrate Lean within your organization. One of the things that you don't want to do is try to actually implement or take all of these tools and use them all at once. Be very careful, be very comfortable if you take one tool. It's okay to roll just one tool out at a time within your organization. Start to feel comfortable with that and, and as you do, you can move on to the next thing. So don't feel like you need to take all these tools and start to implement them within your organization all at once. It's perfectly fine to be able to break them down because as you will start to see, there are a number of tools within the list of tools that are available for your lean method. So let's cover some of them. 
Here are some of the common lean tools. When we look at these and you have an opportunity to break them down, many of them um, seem very simple or it may be things that we've actually done before within our organization. For example, the very first one, time observation. How long does it take to do something? Many organizations have logged for a long time the time of things. For example, the time of the treatment, the time of the test, the time of the surgery. We also have moved in this timing and looking at, for example, how long do people wait in our waiting rooms? So our check-in times, our throughput times. Those are all called time observation, and those are great metrics to be able to use within your organization as you continually improve. The use of time observation is a very quick sample of saying why do people either wait or how long it takes to move an individual or move information as an example through your organization. So be able to use those pieces as metrics as you start to continue to move and move your organization to becoming more efficient and more effective. The next one, a simple process map. This may be a something like a simple flow chart. We've used those for years within our organization. Those are great things to be able to look at and say, are there loops? Are, is there rework? Is there decisions where defects or errors can be made? So thinking of those very simple um, process maps within your organization. We've already used those and many organizations have used them for years for education and teaching. The next one, a more complex process map. There's a lean tool called a swim lane. Think of this as, as you would a swimming pool where there's lanes marked out. What are individuals doing? What are individuals doing within those lanes? How do those lanes interact with each other? Do they interact with each other and should they interact with each other? So using the methodology of a swim lane or looking at multiple processes happening at the same time can be an effective way to recognize where there's bottlenecks. The next one, a value stream map, is a very, very common lean tool. Probably one of the most common tools when it comes to implementing or starting your lean journey. So many of you may have tried to use a value stream map. A value stream map does not have to be a complex tool. It's a very quick, three simple process. If you're interested in doing more value stream mapping within your organization, we recommend later on the resources that are available or other presentations that are out there on value stream mapping can be a great way to start using this opportunity to be able to identify not only how work is being done, but where the problems within that may lie. The next one, spaghetti diagramming. Think of this as an opportunity to take a layout of your organization and draw lines of where and how the work is moving. So if you think of it as the name entails, a spaghetti diagram, it ends up looking like your diagram has a bunch of lines drawn on it. If you have a bunch of lines that are neat and organized, you've probably done some work. If not, it looks like a plate of spaghetti where things are all mixed up and jumbled. If you're in that stage where things are all mixed up and, jum and jumbled, you have some opportunity for improvement. 5S, again, probably one of the next most common lean tools that people have implemented and started to use within their organization. A great tool, a really great tool if you're looking at an area that needs to be organized and be clutter free. Common areas that we often see 5S being done is storage cabinets or storage closets. Think about that if you don't go to that area very often and you walk in to find something. How easy is it to identify, to locate, to find? If you answered the word not so easy, then you've got some 5S work to be done. Again, 5S is a great lean tool that we have some other videos that are out there available to you if you're interested in feel free to contact us or be able to watch some of the other videos that we may have specific to 5S. The rapid improvement or process improvement team, um, often called a Kaizen, is a lean word that we often hear within our organization. Kaizen is a Japanese word for rapid improvement to the good. And so when we think of those words, rapid improvement to the good, we assemble a group of individuals 
that do that and can do it very quickly when you pull that team together. So you hear individuals talking about a rapid process improvement team or workshop, if you will, also called a Kaizen. Really, it's a team of individuals that are coming together to be able to help each other improve a process. The next one, A3 documentation. A3 is a documentation tool that we often use to collect all of the information that has gone through our team and through our improvement journey and be able to document it in one place. Think of it as a glorified minutes or your opportunity to be able to share with others what that team did in a simple one-page piece of paper. And last but not least, we have standard work. Again, a common lean tool where we see individuals can read the recipe of, for how work is supposed to be done, and they can quickly learn and use it to improve their own work. So here are some common lean tools. If you're wondering where those resources and a good place to start, there are many resources out there, such as this one, Tool Time for Lean, where you can go and read more and learn how to do each of these tools step by step. We also have many videos out there on several of these tools where you can use and learn the step by step directions for each of these. So if you're interested in more of the tools, don't be afraid to ask for the resources. We're available and able to come and help you within your organization as well. So now that you've heard quite a bit about a lean and the lean journey that you will be undertaking within your organization, why would you want to do it? There are some benefits within your organization and for your organization that when you start to implement a lean environment and begin that journey. It is a journey. It is something that does not happen overnight. It is something that will take years to actually feel like you've actually switched over um, and are there. And honestly, for some organizations, they don't ever feel like they're completely there. But I do challenge you, and I am inspired in many different examples that we have um, across the United States of implementing lean within your organization. There are benefits to this. Some of the immediate benefits are listed here, but you will find as you start to use the lean methodologies within your organization, they're much more than just this list. So don't be afraid to try. Don't be afraid to implement one of the tools. Ultimately, we're here to help you in your journey and be able to move toward excellence and value within your organization. If you're interested, here's our contact information. Feel free to call the Compass PTN or the Iowa Healthcare Collaborative, and we can ultimately be able to help you with your lean implementation. We thank you for your time today, and at any point in time, if you have questions, please contact us. Thank you.